Last week we looked at spur gears, where um, the center lines of the gears are parallel and the teeth are parallel. Now let's look at bevel gears, which instead of being cylinders are cone shapes, and the center lines intersect. So spur gears are made of cylinders and their center lines are parallel. Bevel gears are made of cones and their center lines intersect. And they can intersect at any angle. Sometimes you just need gears to change direction to go around a corner and you're not changing speed. And if you're doing that, those are called miter gears. Not that we need to remember that necessarily. But some words we do need to remember are these common terms that we've already learned about when we talked about spur gears. These same words, addendum, dedendum, diametral pitch, circular pitch, and all of those are, <coughs> are the same with bevel gears as they are with spur gears. The difference is that with a bevel gear, you're taking the measurements along the back of this tooth. So remember the, the, the basic gear shape is a cone and here's the tooth that starts big in the back and gradually tapers down. It's along the back where you take the measurements for addendum and dedendum and so forth. And if you have calculated how big an addendum or dedendum is, for a spur gear, let's say you have a tooth size that's a diametral pitch of 5, and you look up the sizes for your spur gear with a diametral pitch of 5. If you have a bevel gear where the tooth size has a diametral pitch of 5, you'll use that same addendum and same dedendum as you would with a spur gear that has the same size teeth. So here is a spur gear with a parallel center line. There's its addendum and dedendum. And you can see essentially you are taking the measurement along the back side of the tooth. It's just that the tooth is parallel and perpendicular. Here is a bevel gear with an addendum and dedendum. Once again, taking the dimensions along the back side of the tooth. This uh, picture out of Machinery's Handbook shows two bevel gears in mesh. So there's one bevel gear that's more or less vertical and a second bevel gear that's more or less horizontal. And what you can see here is that the center lines of those two gears intersect. And that is always true with a bevel gear. However, they do not have to intersect at a 90 degree angle. In this picture, they happen to be 90 degrees, but they could be some other angle. And that's the cool thing about bevel gears is you can uh, change direction and go around corners at darn near any angle. These bevel gears need to be manufactured in pairs. So you draw them in pairs and you make them in pairs. And if you have to replace a gear, you have to replace both gears in the gear train. So now, when you make a working drawing of a bevel gear, if you do not have a keyway, you only need one view. You could make a section view of the bevel gear. Here it is. And put on dimensions for the gear blank, put on a table for the teeth, and that's all you need. However, most cases do have a keyway, and the one that we're going to draw does have a keyway. So here's an example out of our book of a bevel gear that does have a keyway. So in this case, you do need both a section view and a circular view. And as with a spur gear, 
We use phantom lines for the outside diameter and the bottom root diameter, and we use a center line for the pitch diameter. Here they are highlighted. Um, these are both the same circular view. I've just shown it twice so I can highlight these lines. So the outside diameter and the root diameter are represented by phantom lines. The pitch diameter is represented by a center line. And this is when you're drawing this circular view. As with a spur gear, you put dimensions on some things and uh, gear cutting data in a table. So the dimensions show what are the sizes and shapes of the gear blank before someone cut those teeth in a gear hauber. So here you can see there's a diameter of the hub and here's some thicknesses. Here are dimensions for the keyway width, width and depth. Then we use the table for the data that will be used to set that gear hobbing machine so that they can cut the teeth the right size and shape into the gear blank. So dimensions for the gear blank, table for the teeth. Another thing that you show in the dimensions is what is known as the mounting distance, and that's highlighted in yellow on this slide. The mounting distance is where the two center lines of the two mating gears intersect, and this is a working drawing of one gear, so we're not seeing the second gear, but we are seeing the mounting distance. That's where the other gear, um, it's um, center line will intersect. Some designers like to dimension the pitch angle. I think that's a good idea. This is an illustration out of the ASME, actually it's still called ANSI, gear standard, just so you can see the source document. By the way, you'll notice down here are some geometric dimensioning and tolerancing symbols. And finally, here is the table out of our book that we can use for calculating the addendum, the circular pitch, the dedendum, the hole depth, and so forth. You'll notice this is the same table. And we use the same table whether we're doing a spur gear or a bevel gear.